This is a very special uh, pop-up podcast. It's a um, student request coming from Dawn, who uh, has been viewing some of my uh, concentration and molarity uh, videos and has asked, uh, just for a little bit of clarification. So this video is for you, Don, and for any other students who are um, struggling, let's say, with some of the videos on this topic. So when dealing with concentrations, typically you're going to have examples as such, right? When you're trying to find a percentage, and I'll say like an MV uh, concentration or percentage. And so you, you'll have a couple of them. And, and, I, and I do um, kind of explain this in my other videos. But what we're, we'll be looking at is concentrations of mass volume concentrations, right? So percent. Uh, sometimes we might be looking for mass percent volume volume. And when dealing with um, these and sometimes even mass mass when dealing with such examples look at this these letters right this mv and this vv so what they really mean is pretty much it's giving you the um it, it's almost giving you what the equation actually is and another way that we can look at this is maybe even reverse this right reverse at least this symbol here and put it after this so I'm going to write this mass volume percent. And I'm going to write it this way because what we're going to do is now think algebra, right? Think uh, math now. Let's move away from the chemistry and start getting into a, 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 a math kind of mindset. So what we have here is M slash V, which really means mass above of a volume. And the mass is typically in grams. Volume is typically in milliliters. And then this symbol, this percent, right? Uh, as I like to state with my students, per cent in French means per 100. So we have this mass volume percent, meaning mass on top of volume multiplied by 100 and typically the only this is really the equation and when you equal when when you actually make this equal something this will equal some kind of a percent value it will equal either something like this one of this or one of this depending on the style of question now a few other things that I do want to make note of that that I may have not been as clear um, in the video because of the examples I, uh, I used we mention here, let me just find a color to use. We mention here that we're looking at the mass divided by the volume. But, right, and so whatever this first um, letter is, is representative of, it is always representing the solute. So it's whatever's being dissolved within the, um, the the entire solution right so we've got the solute is represented always by whatever the top number is or whatever the first letter is in this set of uh, letters for for concentration the bottom part right that with this example here is in milliliters is representative of the entire solution Right? So we've got the entire solution. So here it is. Right? Let's, let's take, for example, um, a, a beaker of water, and we're going to drop in particles of salt. Right? So the salt is the solute. Right? The water is the solvent, right? It's the one that actually does the dissolving. But this whole thing together, right, with the salt, or should I actually, should I say, let me uh, remove some of that. Should I say the solute plus the solvent is going to equal the solution. And the value of, or, or the entire solution has to be in this second aspect 
of our equation. And that second one represents the entire solution. So please be careful with the wording of any style of question. Now, let's, um, let's go to this first example here. Uh, we have calculate the grams or milliliters of a solute, right? So solute, this is what we're adding, right? So the solute uh, needed in each of the following solutions. So I've got two examples, one that we're showing here. So what we have here is 1,250 milliliters of a 4% mass volume, right, solution of NH4Cl, right, ammonium chloride. So the entire solution, right, as we said, the entire solution is going to be representative of whatever's here at the bottom. So we've got this mass volume. So this mass volume, is pretty much this part of this equation, right? This mass volume, right? And this mass volume, when we divide them, is always going to be by 100. And it's going to give us some kind of a percent. As we've said before, right, this mass here, right, is that of the solute. And the question says, calculate the grams milliliters of a solute. So that's what we're trying to find. Right? We've got a volume of 1,250 milliliters. Right? So we don't know what the mass is. Right? That's what we're trying to find. So that's going to be our x value. It's being divided by our volume, which is 1,250. When we divide these, if we had this number of x, we would typically multiply it by 100. And it would give us some kind of a percent, but that percent is already given to us. There it is, the 4 percent. So now think in terms of algebra. Right? Remember what we said? We want to think in terms of algebra when dealing with these type of questions. So let me uh, let me just move uh, part of this question here. Right? Just so I can have some room underneath here. So what we're going to do now is isolate for the mass. Right? So we've got x here all by itself. We've got x here by itself, let me change the color. So we've got X, and it's being divided by 1250. I've got my equal sign, and I've got my 4% value um, that I've kind of calculated. So what I want to do is I want to isolate for my X and bring everything that is a number over to the other side of this equal sign. So I just want to keep X on this side. So this multiplied by 100 here, and I, can, and I can rearrange, I can bring either the 1250 or the, the times 100. I'm going to bring the times 100 over first. So this times 100, right, um, is being multiplied on this side. But when we bring anything over onto the other side, if it's being multiplied on one side, it becomes divided on the other side. So we're going to divide it by... 100 because we're multiplying so we're bringing it over we're going to bring this 1250 over but what's what's the function that's actually occurring this x is being divided by the 1250 so division right division here is what is bringing oops i shouldn't have done that division is what's we're, is what we're doing with this 1250 so we're going to bring this 1250 over so when we bring it across the equal sign it becomes multiplication so what it's doing is we're taking these two numbers, 4 divided by 100, and we're multiplying it by 1,250. So notice that the, the two numbers that we brought over, right, the 100 and the 1,250 are doing the exact opposite function that they were doing when they were on this side of the equal sign. So we're going to isolate for that. We're going to either divide 4 by 100 and then multiply by 1250, or we're going to multiply the 4 by 1250 and divide it by 100. And the answer that we're going to get is as follows. The answer for x is equal to 50 grams. And so we don't really, we can't really tell really by the units right here that we have. We have 1250 milliliters that maybe I could have included in my equation. But note that, as I said before, the mass, when dealing with such questions, mass is always going to be in grams. And that volume is always going to be in 
milliliters. So we were isolating for a mass and we were getting, and the answer worked out to 50 grams. So we're going to look at one more example and hopefully this example we're going to kind of go through a little quicker because we don't have to go through all the, um, the theory aspect. But we're going to start off with this equation here, this 10% VV, right? Remember we said we're going to take this VV and we're going to have it kind of dictate our equation, right? It means volume, volume. And what do we do always with it? We're going to multiply it by 100 to give us some kind of percent. And that percent happens to be given to us. Oops. It's 10%. As I've mentioned before, the top represents the solute. The bottom represents the entire solution. So as I've said before, the uh, solute plus the solvent right, will give us the entire solution. Remember that if we add a mass, right, let's uh, let, just kind of pause this question just for a quick second to kind of go back. If I am putting in 50 grams into this solution, it's not really going to make any difference. It's kind of like me adding droplets of, uh, of salt into this water solution. It's not really going to change much, right? If I was putting another liquid, yes, the volume will change if I was mixing. But I'm putting little droplets of salt, right? Little grains of salt into the solution. The volume isn't going to change. Right. So if I was, you know, putting um, the uh, the ammonium chloride into this solution here, right? This it is 1,250 milliliter solution. This 50 grams isn't really going to change the volume of my actual solution. So let's go back. Sorry for that uh, side note. But anyhow, we've got our numbers. So our volume of our solute is what we're trying to find. So that is what we're going to give as the with the letter X. And we're going to divide it by the volume that we're given of this solution, right, which happens to be 250 milliliters. As we said, solutions, right, our volumes are, volumes are typically in milliliters. Um, volume, right, regardless of whether it's at the top or bottom, are in milliliters. So we're going to multiply it by 100, and it's going to equal to that 10% of that solution. So we want to isolate for x and keep this equal sign where it is. Right? So we want to keep this equal sign. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little different. Typically what I do when I teach algebra is I kind of separate the left and the right side, because now we're going to go into a math mindset. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this equal sign here. We're going to keep any whole numbers on uh, you know on its appropriate side the only number that we're keeping on this side is the only number that's there 10 percent we're going to keep x because x is what we want to keep we want to bring 250 over to this side of the equal sign we want to bring this times 100 over to this side of the equal sign because we want to isolate just for x so as i said before if we are multiplying on this side by 100 when we bring it over to this side it becomes divided by 100. I'm bringing this 250 over. It's being divided by here, right? Division is the function with the 250. So if I bring this 250 milliliters over, it becomes times 250 milliliters. Right? So we could do it in that way, right? And solve, right? Or I could have done this, and I'm going to do this in green. Still keep my x over. I still have the 10% over. What I could do is I could have said, hey, let's multiply it by 250 right, milliliters right, and, and bring this part over first and then bring this times 100. So this times 100 now becomes divided by 100 and I divide the entire equation by 100. Right? So this format here that I did in green and this that I did in blue is exactly the same because the functions here are all multiplication division. There is no addition in, in, this, uh, in these functions. So the math is always going to work the exact same way. So when we go about solving this and we do this 10% times 250 here divided by 100 or do 10 divided by 100 then multiplied by 250, 
we are going to get a value for x that is equal to 25. But now we go back to figuring out what was our x. Our x is supposed to represent a volume. So the volume is x is equal to 25 milliliters. I hope, uh, Don, this helped uh, clarify uh, some of the questions you may have had. Sorry that it's a 15-minute video, but like I said, I hope this uh, will, will at least clarify to you and maybe some of your fellow uh, classmates. Good luck.